Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by Christopher Duarte, a.k.a. Paris. I got the one and only, the executive producer, Mr. Benji Nassim. And then we got the one and only, the man of the hour, Aches, the Slayer, Patrick Price, finally made it to Toronto. Slayer, talk to me, Pat. Welcome. You weren't here yesterday. I know you've been working, been doing your thing. I know you had a rough travel day today. How does it feel to finally be here, Pat? Feels good, Tom. After a little over an hour Uber ride of just the sun beating down on me while Optic was getting 3-0'd, um, it, was, it was great. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, travel day from hell, but we're finally here. Uh, venue sick, <laughs> setup sick. So, oh yeah. Uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday. That's where that's where the good matches well, you think, start. You think we, this is the best setup we've had, or what? This is fire. View for sure. This is pretty yeah. sick, right? Yeah, the view. Maybe not in front of us because yeah. there's a lot going on. When I walked in, I got scared because I thought I was not supposed to come in that door because I just walked in the, and I hit the light. I was like, Shit. <laughs> yeah, no, we're in a tight space here, but we do have a really cool background, so. It is really cool to be here. Chris, Ben, how you guys doing? I know Ben's messing with the sign. Chris, how you it's doing? Hot. I'm good. It was a great day of matches. There was some uh, very, uh, it was a weird day. I mean, the, the matches are continuing to Upsets. create a pretty weird storyline. Oh, yeah. We got some uh, pretty interesting setup for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Today was a very interesting day. Ben, anything, uh, yeah. anything going on? So, bro? I mean, What's this morning, on, so? Uh, so I got here pretty early, work with uh, Riley and the Esports Engine crew to, um, you know, get uh, the audio delay fixed issue we had yesterday, so that was yeah. perfect. No problems today. Um, yeah, I mean, this the tournament's been great. Uh, Ultra's been a great host. I thought today's matches, uh, there's obviously a, a couple of major upsets. Uh, one of the favorites going home on, on day two and not making it to the weekend. Mm -hmm. And I think we're set up for um, a weekend where I think three of the four favorites all have really good momentum. And unfortunately, one of those three is going to go home by the end of tomorrow. So. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of shocking results. We'll obviously get into it. We also had some people come on the couch today. We had Miles Ross, we had Tactical Rab, we had Crone. Who else we had? We had a bunch of people on Daniel today. Say. Daniel Say came on the couch today. Shout out to Daniel Say. So it's been a really good day in the watch party. But we're gonna lock on in and go through every series one by one. So let's switch on over and see the first series of the day. We start things off, we got the London Royal Ravens kicking off against the Boston Breach here in the losers round one. And London, you guys were laughing at we me yesterday. Laughing. laughing, the chat was clowning me. Chris was clowning me, Ben was laughing at me. Slay, I called this one yesterday that London was gonna get a W. What happened to Boston Breach today? Uh, ahead, the submachine guns got fucking slammed. I mean, look. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought the big thing for me was less than what Boston did in Nasty, Asim, Maddie, even Yuli was making some really good plays, uh, especially in SND. Like I thought, London really came to play. They was probably the best series we've seen them play like all year. The team challenges were in there. They uh -huh. played a very talented Boston team that can slay well. The stuff we were seeing in the hard points, especially the back end of the Embassy, like the fluidity the team was playing with, the the way they were getting trades, like. I wish we had seen that London team all season because they would have been a, a factor, and it sucks that this is sort of like, you know, yeah. our last look at it. But I thought it was a really good effort from London, and then just to kind of clean things up on Boston, like mm -hmm. dead last is just going backwards with this team. I don't really know what you can I do. I mean, the clear the clear uh, you know, star of the show here was the fact that London was able to take that first map in a absolute photo finish. Yeah, that was um, crazy. Boston choked the living fuck out of it. They choked it uh, yesterday versus uh, New York. Was it wasn't New York. No, it was um, who did they play in winners? <clears throat> who? London? Rocker? No, yeah, no, they no, played no. Rocker, right? Boston. Oh, Boston. Yeah, they, they played Rocker. It, they choked they lost it versus about, Rocker in the exact yeah. same way. Choked against Phase last weekend. Yeah, they they just can't win a P one. Um, London took advantage of it, got momentum, and then just closed it out. But I mean, they win that in hindsight, right? They you know Boston wins that map. This probably goes last map, and I think. Um, you know they probably have a better chance here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I want to I want to start a dialogue. Sure, talk. Okay. To we that. talked about the breach roster going into major five. Yeah. Okay. We talked about this. We had a couple shows about it, um, and they they ended up going with Vivid for Nero, right? Yeah. Ben, do you do you do if you finally admit that that was that was not the right move, and they should have brought in Doug Sensor Martin? I don't I don't think I don't think Doug would have been a factor in them winning or losing that, the series I don't know. Today. I feel like their biggest problem is they – I feel like they need the somebody like fucking the Doug. They they need somebody they who need, wants they, to yeah, dive into a, a hill. Huh? Like, I, I Doug's think, an AR now. I, I think the biggest problem – Doug's this, just unselfish. That's team, what they need. This, they need unselfishness. This, Go ahead, This man. team – I think the biggest issue is this team It needs to probably decide between Big Wake and B 
beans, who's going to go? Because they just don't have, like, an AR who's going to do the right stuff on the map. And both of them just try and play for kills. I think you look at all the really good teams. Like, I think, for example, Thieves. Like, Sam is a very unselfish player. He blocks. He manipulates the map. I don't see Ben doing it as effective as I see Dashy do it, as I see Austin do it, as I see Sam do it. And I think that's the big issue. Yeah, maybe you bring Doug in and run a main AR. I guess you can try it. It would be risky. Um, but... I don't know. Boston Bro, just, Boston they just in have the blender, too man. many of the same they, players. Yeah. They can't yeah. even do that anymore. Their roster is locked because uh, I know that Zed is, Zed is their sub and Nero is their sub. Yeah. Listen, these guys have progressively gone worse and worse ever since Why they placed Zed fourth. Why sub? He just because they just had him signed as a sub because they didn't have an actual sub before, I think, because they, they paid their academy team, like academy wages, not sub wages. Yeah. Um, these guys have gone worse and worse since they brought in – like, not since they brought in Beans, but since they got fourth. Dude, what the fuck did they do? They got fourth at a tournament. Then they had a pretty lackluster stage, whatever. They end up coming back home. They beat Toronto in their league match. Or, mm -hmm. or New York. It was, I forgot who it was. They beat, they beat a good team. Yeah. Dropped Reese right yeah. after they were doing, after they beat a good team. Mm -hmm. These guys were making progress, at least to some degree, and then just decided to fuck over their entire chemistry. They brought in Kremp. Then they replaced Kremp with Nero and... Go back to your original roster yeah. with Beans and work it out there. I would keep Vivid and Nero. I would keep both of them. Just go, yes, go back to the team that got you fourth yeah. and work on that. Yeah. I, I don't know. They, they, they have a uh, – I mean, they got two weeks to kind of figure it out. But, again, we're in the same spot Boston was in last year, bro. This team is probably going to champs and getting sixth or eighth, and that's it. Like, they just are not capable of winning an event. They have a lot of weaknesses uh, in matches where they need to show up and exert what I think is, like, definitely more skill. Like, in this one, they got outskilled. Is there any way? Can They can they can roster change before chance, but it's got to be their substitute, right? Yeah, so it has to be Nero. So it has to be, Nero. Has to be a combination or, or of Nero, Kremp, so Vivid, and All really they can do is put Nero in for Kremp, right, and get their right. original roster? Right. Yeah, or if they just went rogue and put, like, Nero, Nero for in me. for, like, Beans or Awakening and had one of them swap roles. Well, that's, um, a, that's a problem. Having Beans Awakening and Kremp on the same team is a problem. And I the stand thing is, by though, that. it's like Kremp, really, Kremp, Kremp had a really bad series, and I feel like he's actually been pretty good for this team online. Um, even on land, he's been okay. This, uh, this, is, this, is for, this is first land. Did he play a major four? Mm -mm. Who, Kremp? Yeah, yeah he, he played, played, he four, played right? a major four, right? Yeah. yeah, he played. This is yeah, for, this first main stage, like, in front of a crowd land. In front of a crowd. I yeah. just personally think you go back to the roster that gave you the most success, and that was the team that plays four. And well, then you like work on it and write it out till but champs. We talked about that fourth, and it wasn't that impressive of a fourth. But they they don't have any other choice. Like you can't bring in Doug. They don't if have Doug any other wasn't a sub, they they were locked now. They don't you, have any other choices, bro. As far as we know, and well, if someone if someone yeah, wants to let us know otherwise, as, yeah. as far as we know, going in this event, whatever roster you submit with subs are the only players you can choose from for champs. Which is why I said, Ben, they should have experimented in Stage 5. It could also just be one of those series where they just, like, flopped. Like, because to be honest, they looked pretty good online. They were they were, they were competitive these in their wait, online these matches. Guys are the, these guys are the Boston re-EQ The Prish. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that obviously. <laughs> <Boston> break. <laughs> Obvi obviously, but, I mean. Of course they look good Either online. way, people are going to get a lot more practice yeah. at home now that there's no league matches without <laughs> Without you, that, yeah, no. you didn't know what the fuck you were saying right there, <laughs> the bro. Uh, either way, I think they just go back to their OG roster that got them fourth and work it out until champs, and then after champs, you know, evaluate from, evaluate from there. Yeah, a hundred percent. What is it moving? We gotta get you. What's going on? Like, is it moving? Yeah, I think uh, it's like tilts or something. We'll get him it's enough. okay. We're good. We're good. I'll, uh, I'll make. I'll keep track. Of it. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> what are you doing? We're good, Ben. Oh, we're good, uh, bro. Don't okay. touch oh, anything. Bro. Okay. It's okay, executive producer. You can relax. Uh, let's hop into the next series of the day. Obviously, Boston. They fall. Sure. Uh, and they end up getting knocked out by London. So Boston goes home. What was their final placing? Last? Oh, I see Dead, last. Dead last. Dead last. Right? Fucked. Dead last. But not their first 12th either, Tom. How many is that now? Two? Three? Two or three. Oh, shit. Not looking good for the Boston Breezes. They get eliminated here on Friday. Let's hop into the next one. We had the Los Angeles Gorillas going up against the New York Subliners. This was a quick 3-0 sweep for the New York Subliners. The Los Angeles Gorillas. Their season ends today here on Friday. We'll take a look at the stats from uh, from the series today. But, I mean, I felt like LAG, to be honest, was just going through the motions, get this shit over with, get this season if over this with. If this was an online match, which we did in our last two times, we've, we've talked about uh, LAG in an online match, uh, we skipped it. Yeah. In my opinion, I know we're out of it. What the fuck is there to talk about? These guys chalked their roster, like, months ago. Yeah. It's chalked. Mm-hmm. 
Just uh, there's put one him thing to, bed, to talk bro. about. Paco's still going fucking nuts. Yeah, Paco's, He's still going Paco's crazy. one of the greatest of all time subs at this point. What is godlike? Well, I, I guess one question I will ask you is, what does the future look like for the Los Angeles Gorillas? I'm hearing because you know the rumor how they're, they're they're losing their spot or whatever they're trying to get out of it. I'm hearing they still got one more year, year in this. I'm hearing the LAG is back for another year. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I, I, they, there hasn't been a lot of but that's, that's solid rumors. Of lack of sell, right? Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of either. Well, there's interest, but I don't think it's interest that people that could. The problem, the problem that is, through Activision. The problem so. is them coming back for another year just puts us in another year of this LAG cycle. Like yeah. I don't, I don't think we're gonna get anything. Put your mouse so I, I put the. Uh, mic right I, I just, I'm just curious what LAG is gonna do, like with this, these players. And I don't like, think they're gonna pay any money to get anybody good, though. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. So I'm, I'm really curious, kind of what their, what their plan is. I don't, I don't know. I mean, we can uh, sit here and tricky. speculate all we want. Um, if their intention is to like sell and like cut their losses and not really try to invest anymore, then they'll probably just pick up like a low budget team and just go for like either it. scraps or just roll a challenge. Long dong gorillas. Um, I saw for it the, for the out. No way. Um, Did they tweet something out? Gorillas. I mean, oh, man. there could be. So like from what I know, um, there was pro there was a lot of internal issues with this team. I think there was a lot of disagreements within the within the camp and and the players and the coaching staff. Yeah. So I'm gonna assume that whoever. Management, coaching staff, is, will probably stay the same because, like, why? Why would you go out of your way to hire more people if you don't care? Right. Um, and they'll probably just keep around who they like, wanted to agree with, and just try to build something and relinquish the situation. Uh, um, that's that's probably what will happen. I mean, I mean, if you guys are LAGs, is there anybody you're keeping? Are you wiping the whole roster? I mean, what what is your thought process now if you're looking for the well, future? Well, it, it, it really depends. I think for if like RCDs, Joe, etc., get like offers, but. I could see a world where they keep Joe if he doesn't get anywhere or, like, assault and maybe exceed. Uh -huh. um, I don't think Alec is going to want to be there at all, regardless of the situation. He and he'll to. probably get – he might get another team. I know a lot of people still hold his stock pretty high and um, sympathize with the situation being uh, being such an accoladed player. Yeah. So I have a feeling if he goes somewhere, he'll, he'll, he'll probably go somewhere else if he's mm -hmm. on a team. I think Joe DeCees is the one guy they'll probably keep around if they needed to keep. Yeah, know? if they needed he's, to keep someone and no, if, guy in the league if nobody got him on offer, then yeah, they'll probably they'll probably do that. Well, I don't know what their contracts are looking like either. Are they free agents? Are they restricted? No, or they, they'll they, just they, pick up. Or they'll just pick up another like mix of challenger teams. No, they they players. everybody's on new deals. Like they're I don't know what their buyout situation is. I'm I'm curious. Again, are they going to run it back with with some version of this team? Or are they going to just kind of try and buy everybody out uh. and then get it back on new deals? I I don't know. It's a very weird. Free agent I mean, situation. Pat, what would you do? Anything you would do? Wipe him? Keep a player? What are you doing? Blowing it up. You're huh? blowing it up? Blowing I had a feeling you were going to say Not a single one is yeah. coming back. Man, I had a feeling you were going to say blow it up. Uh, and then, of course, uh, on the other side, New York. I thought New York looked good. I thought it was a good series for them. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I don't want to just say LAG was a walk in the park, but I think New York's been, been kicking up. They've been looking really good recently. I feel like just individually they've all been stepping up. Um, I've, we've talked about Hydra a lot, but I just think the players around him, I think Skies has been playing a lot better. P-Dog, I, th I just think the ARs, you know what you're going to get out of Kismet? He's a very unselfish player. He's going to do a lot of that that gritty work, but I think the ARs are important for New York. They need P-Dog and they need Skies to turn up this weekend if they want to make a run. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you guys agree with me on that or, or what, but... Um, I still want to see Skies get a little bit more active. <laughs> you want to yeah. see him get in the mix more. Yeah. But, but I think I've noticed that he's been kind of slowing it down i think to try and create more space for hydra and p dog and not get them totally out of whack those guys want to take risks so i mean it's working for them i think they've been a little bit better the hotel austin d seems to be looking good they are going to play thieves in their next series we might see a hotel austin d square up on there but i like where new york is positioned in this run going into the weekend they maybe can make some noise in this one yeah, well, let's hop into the next series of the day. This is the one a lot of people were shocked about. Maybe not everybody, but uh, a lot of people were definitely uh, a little shaken up by this one, especially the Optic fans as we head in to the third series. We have Optic Texas going up against the Los Angeles Thieves here, and Optic Texas fall 3-0 to LA Thieves. They also did not win a single map this whole tournament. They go 0-6 map count. They were 10-0 and in the last two stages online, heading into it, top two at the last two LAN events, but they fall short without winning a single map here this weekend in Toronto. Um, I mean, Pat, I'll kick things off with you. Look at the stat sheet. Optic just got 
absolutely blundered in this series. What happened, Pat? What happened? <coughs> yeah, so I mean, I saw I saw their, they tweet out when they were flying to the event. They were all flying first class, so mm -hmm. I hope they got a nice first class return flight to Cancun because right. that's where they're headed. Okay. Um, Fuck, they still have champs. Online, though, yeah, I mean, these guys were, were different, <laughs> but I think they were in a, a nice honeymoon period. Um, I think, you know, they were – they look at their stats. I mean, you, you both days – don't, we don't have the scoreboard from yesterday, but, like, it's it was the same picture. Like, mm -hmm. they all just got they absolutely got, – They got fucking star. ran. Um, Maps weren't this, even close, This too. series didn't surprise me. I kind of expected this one to go this way, but the, yet the series yesterday was obviously the, the big surprise, and I think mm -hmm. which obviously led to hey, What were your thoughts result? on that? Because you weren't here yesterday. I mean, what did you think about the Florida team? They looked I mean, pretty good, the Florida, Florida team. Florida looked good, but yeah. Florida is not better than Optic Texas. And no, so the I fact agree. that they came out and did that to them here the day one like that was, uh, was pretty embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, so that one was a shocker for sure. I didn't expect them to lose that uh, in round one, but... <clears throat> I mean, man, like, the difference between online and LAN is, is, is crazy. Yeah, I mean, we I definitely saw a lot of things wrong with OpTic today. and it, I just I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the atmosphere or if, if something just wasn't clicking for them this weekend. I know the, I think Dan tweeted out he wasn't feeling too well. I don't know. Something seemed off with them. Just the decision-making, so many. They're going back to their, their old ways, right? Like, solo chow. After solo chow, sometimes it feels like they're just running and they're forgetting about the fundamentals and forgetting about what they practice. I don't know if it's an environment thing with the crowd and stuff. Maybe they're so hyped up. I mean, Ben, Chris, what, what do you guys think it is? They, they just they, did not look like they themselves. They forgot to pack lunch, and the only thing was there was the craft singles, Tom. Like, Good uh, one, Benji. It's an absolute pleasure. <laughs> no, nah, I agree with you. Like, We were watching the Mercado, and uh, you know, we, we talked a lot about with this team. The subs are very aggressive, and they kind of live and die by that. But like, when there are situations where they're not front-running a team, and they need uh -huh. to break hills... Uh, you need to learn to chow with your teammates. You learn to like kind of being switched. And I felt like we saw none of that uh, on the Mercado. So, About all the S&Ds, um, they really, really struggled to uh, execute really anything. And the most frustrating thing I felt like in the S&Ds is Optic had a lot of first bloods and like just trolled uh, 4v3. Bro, so. we, I'm going to be honest. We can't even like single out one game mode. These guys got fried every single map, every single mode of this entire tournament. Um, the only thing that I could literally... Like, if I want to actually maybe, like, give a, not like a reason, but, like, I guess some insight to this. If you think about it, the, la the, the out of the three lands they've been to, two of them with crowds, they've lost their first winner's round match. Yeah. The first one that they played as a team was at Dallas, and they lost it to Boston. Yeah. The next one was obviously here. The Columbus one, it was still an event. It was still land, but it, it was there was no crowd. Like, there's obviously a lot less pressure. It's a lot more comfortable and intimate. Um, so maybe... There is some warrant to what you said, how they kind of like lose their heads in their in the in the ch in the I mean, environment. Bro, they got to figure and, it out. And man. and also, they were really close to getting eliminated to London, another yeah. like yeah. upset at that first event together. They obviously, you know, they got over that hurdle got dead and last. they made a run. They got some confidence. Um, I think Optic in general just needs to like start off these events hotter um, because these guys, I feel like these are the team that like they catch fire and they start. Then at these tournaments, they can start rolling, but they obviously didn't get the opportunity here. Outside of that, bro, I mean, dude, they just came and they played with their feet. Like, look yeah, at the stats. I think, I think Hook had probably the worst event of his, of his career. Yeah. He probably had one of the worst events of all time for, like, a competitive mm. player. Like, because yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's bottom-of-the-barrel teams that have had people put up stats like this at a, at a tournament. I but. mean, it, it, they were even rotating a lot and just, like, insta-breaks. Yeah. Like, they're not getting... They were just, like, early rotating and not even getting killed. They weren't shooting, they, they were shooting back. They, they didn't hit their R1 button. I they mean, would rotate, bro. Like, <laughs> the P2, like, they'd rotate, and then they'd push out, push out, push out, push out, and then both subs die, and then both ARs are getting pushed from every lane by, by like, the entire LA Thieves team. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, Dashie and Dan are pretty good. Like, you're just not going to win... Like two v fours with like fifty nine seconds left in the hell. I want to read the teammates across the scrum flying across fucking planet Earth. Go ahead. They only have done good at an event, their home crowd, and an event with no fans. Didn't they do decent at Boston, but not with this team? It was with LA. It wasn't decent. Like they got top four, right? Yeah, but it they was, got fourth. But it was the f yeah. it was that one that weird Saturday. It was that top four where they just didn't but play anyone. I'm just saying, I don't think I've seen Hugh play good at an event that wasn't the home crowd or or no fans. Minnesota, what? Minnesota? Last year. Bro, I'm talking about this year on this game. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying it's not Bro, like... Bro, this is the same guy we were talking about who was rotating at 55. That, listen, I have always what? been on that, like, Kyler is in... We've talked a lot about this, the Kyler inconsistent wave. Like, he didn't have a great weekend. They all didn't have a great weekend. I think, and we were talking on the watch play, the biggest thing for Optic is realizing, look, your subs are a valuable weapon. When they get going, they get going. They're unstoppable. But you got to have this 
like plan B action of like when that's not working, we need to use our team challenge and play fundamental COD so we can then push out and apply that pressure and that chaos. Well, it can't I, always be just I also chaos. think it's just like a, like a domino effect. Like they'll start off the game and they'll fuck up like a P2 rotation like early on and yeah. then they're just scattered the whole map. They're just scattered the whole rest of the way. Like yeah, they never the, where's the reset button. There's exactly they don't they don't they, they, don't, they, don't, they sometimes it seems like they don't know how to like reset their pace. Like who, whoever's in front doesn't know how to just like give it a second, wait for the guy to catch up. Sometimes they're going, they're pushing in twos, like they're not doing stuff as a, as a team, and I I think a lot of just just comes down to frustration. And, and also to 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 talk about Pat's point, every crowd is a home crowd, regardless of where they are. True, they, they true. had they uh, had hella fans that's, going. That's still for different. Them. They're coming to another team's major, like that's still a different environment than being at like your home event. Yeah, it's a little bit different. I mean, being at a home major is different, but the, it is true that usually the crowd is on their side. Yeah, you know, usually they had that energy, but. They definitely lost their heads, and I don't think it's all falls on optic. I also think we got to look at the other side for LA Thieves. They haven't dropped the map today. I think LA Thieves look great today. They're super disciplined. Their teamwork is on point. There's something about this team that when they get to a LAN environment, when they get back on stage, I feel like everything's clicking for them. Their communication sounded really good, um, and the way they were moving around the map sounded really good. I mean, what did you guys think about the Thieves today? I mean, they're the I, opposite of optic, in my opinion. They're, yeah. they're just fundamentally sound. Like yeah. they just play the game the right I way. I think everyone on the team is just playing really good. Um, Octane. The game looks so easy. Again. It looks so easy for. Draza him. continues to impress and search and destroy. That guy is actually godlike at that game mode. Well, he um, plays it every day. He plays it every he day. Play, every single day he's playing uh, SND8. It's literally without fail. I'm up to like. Two, I'm up to like 6 a.m. Yeah. At like 2, 3 a.m. I go on Twitch. I'm seeing who's live. Draza. Every night. S&D Money 8s. Yep. Pro player Draza. Mm -hmm. We are doing a Creator Wars S&D tournament, by the way. $10,000 on the line. I've been talking to Shotzi, Draza, Scrappy, all the, all the top gunners that play these S&D things at night. Um, and they're all down, too. So make sure to stay tuned for that. We're going to be running a big S&D tournament probably sometime after this major. But, uh, I mean, Pat... Thieves, they look good. I, I feel like when they get to land, I mean, do you think these guys can make a run? There's something about them just on the, on the stage. I just so feel like they have it in them. Going to this tournament, I actually predicted uh, FaZe to get upset and make uh -huh. the loser run. Yeah, you from, did say that. From round right, one right. all the way to finals. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think Thieves are going to make that run. I think Thieves are going to make that, that run all the way from loser bracket. They're probably going to dominate it. Mm -hmm. Chris, remember I did say, too, that FaZe would go undefeated in the loser bracket? I think it might be Thieves. I think I might just got thieves. the teams wrong. Yeah, uh, sure. And I think they're going to meet up with FaZe in the grand final. I think we're going to get a good rematch from, uh, was it Major 2? Um, yeah, that was early yeah. on. Um, yeah, Major 2. I think it was Major 2. I yeah. personally, I mean, this is uh, off topic because we're getting a little sidetracked with the bracket, but I personally think the winner of Ultra Phase wins the tournament. The yeah. winner of Ultra That'll Phase is going to win the tournament. Yeah. That'll be a really I agree big with match. That. Um, yeah, Ben, any final thoughts on, on LA Thieves as a team? Any thoughts? No, we'll talk about them in the later series. And then for Optic, I just it's a big rethink in these next two weeks. And mm. see what they can do to get a little bit more. Uh, I mean, I would say this optic. You got that big hex core space. I know there's no like true land this game. You got a lot of Dallas teams. Why don't you all just play from the hex quarters a couple of days prior to the event? A little bit of a mini land that might be a good environment to try out. Um, alrighty. Well, let's hop over to the next one. This was an unbelievable series by Vegas Legion as they take down Seattle Surge 3-0. Another 3-0 sweep here. You can see the stats completely lopsided here. Um, in favor of the Vegas Legion, Seattle Surge just really struggled today, getting kills. All of them, all all, all four of them, struggled today on, on on getting kills. I mean, Ben, I'll let you kick this one off. Seattle, they got pummeled by Vegas Legion today. Vegas are looking to make the run. So, just a little bit more information for you guys watching. If Vegas win the next two series, yeah. they clinch champs. They make it to, to over champs. Seattle. Mind the list. over Seattle. So this was a massive victory for Vegas here. At this at this tournament, they wanted any chance of, of making champs. They have to win the next three, and Seattle's that team in the way that they're looking to take that spot. So this was just an insane series. They needed this 3-0. What happened with Seattle Surge today? Are there champs? Should they be Should they be a little worried? Seattle. Surge? I have one thought. Be I, have, I have one thought about this uh, this matchup, but it's more of, more it's more of a question for you guys. Uh, How does this affect Lepred's? Uh, what is it called? Legacy. Jesus. I mean, how, I don't know. I don't how does this affect Lepred's le legacy? I mean, bro, <laughs> Lepred's like, legacy is a mouthful. Does, does Seattle, like, like <laughs> Pat, Pat, I'll give Pat credit. He was pretty early on this. Like, very early. This team, the fucking Vanguard early. This team, like, they had a really good major Could've one. Saved them a lot of heartbreak. They had a, a really good money. major <laughs> one, but like the same issues that they have kind of had since major two, like they still have now, and at no point has it occurred to them 
to maybe like make a roster change to try and fix mind blowing some of those issues. Like today, I saw the map set, and for the first time, I was like, "Bro, I looked at the map set." Obviously, the three all. I was like, "This is Vegas got a lot of really good maps here." And if it goes five, I have way more comments on them than on CeeLo. Mm -hmm. And the Embassy Hardpoint, I have more comments on Vegas than I do on Seattle. Like the Seattle team is completely and utterly broken. They got probably the worst series that we've ever seen Pred have in a in a big game of I, I can remember. This as a pro, like he got smoked. Uh, TJ Halley today on the on the Vegas Legion was out here looking like Jimmy he Butler. Unreal. He played on real, bro. Joel Embiid, Nicole, you know, whatever whatever NBA player you Jokic. want to pick. Or Jokic. Like, uh, bro, I don't know, man, with the Seattle team. You know, Gwyn is really the only other option they can choose at this point. I don't know how you want to deal with the Mac and Lamar rotate out for that spot. I really, really, really think that if Seattle pulls up the champs with the same four, if they, even if they make champs, because if Vegas win the next two series, this is an irrelevant conversation. They were going to play phase first round. They're going to get slammed. They're going to play whoever and loses bracket round one, get slammed, and they're going to be. My thing is, know, it can't get any worse. Hitting the tables. Nice. If they do qualify for champs, they should probably just go in with a Gwyn. Just, just get it. as much practice with him. They have only Roll the beat dice. LAG on land in 2023. Yeah. Yep. Only they haven't beat any other team. No, that's they've, crazy. They've, that's a crazy they've already sad. fucked that's this crazy. up. Bro. And LAG is horrible. Yeah, that's <laughs> they, crazy. They have sad. fucked. They have fucked this up supremely. I think the management here has just done such a fucking poor job of, like, trying to build a roster. And even the coaching staff, if he has anything to say. In Bro, it, Sam. Of building a roster. You know Pred yeah. and Sib are potentially gone. They're going to get offers. Unless you can actually counter those offers and try to, like, you know, get a bid to keep them. You need to invest in your in your talent. You have this kid this kid Gwyn on the roster. If you actually believe them in the first place, you put him in as soon as possible when you see your team breaking. Why? You get him some fucking experience. You see what he can do. If people if this guy's gross, not only does it propel the end of your season into better placements, if he's gross, he's going to attract players to join this fucking team. Yeah. Yeah. And instead, you keep him on the bench. So now he's a fucking unknown variable going into the next season. For all you know, he goes back to challengers. You just don't re-sign him for whatever reason. You just fucking wasted an opportunity when your team fucking sucks. I, and it should have happened a long time ago. Should have happened two majors ago. Yeah, I agree. Like, knowing the CL team, though... They're gonna, you know, they're gonna be like, they're still not gonna make a change. They're gonna, they're gonna say, "Fuck it, it's the end of the season. We've been here this far. Why are we making a change?" And yeah, they're gonna run it back. Uh, we know what. And then three say. years from now, we're gonna interview one of these players and be like, "What were you thinking back then?" It's like, well, maybe we should have put Gwyn in. Enough Biggest of the fuck it's, bro. They've been fucking it for fucking. This major one, bro. And it shouldn't <laughs> have got to the point of let's put Gwyn in. They should have made a roster change a year ago. Period. Period. They should. Yeah. They should have capitalized yeah. on the fact that Pred and Sib are gross, and they could have recruited talent that could have matched their their skills. I don't know Gwyn very well. Is he a good player? How good is Gwyn, this Gwyn guy? Well, he's been very good in all the challenger elites. His team, obviously, right now, it's it's been the first day of challengers. I'm sure they're still doing good. Uh. They're still in the tournament. Um, right. But he's been good. They've they if you look at his like placements, they've all been like pretty good in the last. Uh, he's been placing like top four, top two, first. In like a couple of tournaments, yeah. like he's been placing well. Yeah. He's so good, and he's got good stats. So and he's, he's a good search player, bro. And he's and a watch, good search player. Watch him as Indian challengers. He's making a lot of plays. And this team, bro, looking at who this team is gonna have to play at champs, and how they lost last year, by the way, because they were gonna respawn last year. Do you know how they lost in champs last year? They fucking blew Toscan S and because they were not a good search team. Like I don't care if you're gonna fix some of the respawn over this break. They're still gonna be an ass S and D team. They've been that bad way all year. They need to like. Try and build from the S and D up. Do what Vegas has done. You're gonna grind out some game five series, get some confidence, and go. I think they need to bring Gwen in. I I want to give some credit to Vegas. I feel like Vegas looked really good today. I I thought all of them played well. TJ, Chris, I know you already talked about it, but I I think TJ looked insane today. If TJ can keep up on his bullshit that he's doing right now. I mean, these guys can definitely make the run. And Dude, go a Fred long way. said it himself, bro. He can't beat. That What's Terry. the record? Can AG not Pete. take down TJ or what, bro? Beat TJ, What's going on? Bro. And it's hilarious because what is that? The, the 2K block, mental block slay? The whole think? time, the whole time while Tack Rab was here, me and him were just like, oh, he's gonna. Yeah. He, it's TJ versus Fred. Oh, TJ wins it again. Every time, every his head time. to head, he was winning a lot of important fights. It's do or die. 
It is do or die. It is do or die. All of them. I mean, Standy played really well in the round 11 in the, in the map too. Standy was able to pop a big two-piece, able to play his life as well. So he, he went really big in this one as well. I just feel like everybody's pulling away. I thought Donnie played really good this series. And then, of course, you know what you're going to get out of Clay. I feel like Clay's always just that guy. He's bringing the energy to this squad. Like, he's bringing that veteranship. Like, you you know what you're going to get um, out of Clay, sir. So I just think from top to bottom, these guys just really want it. I was talking to them yesterday. I feel like their passion's really there. Like, they just really, really, really want to make champs. They were playing winning play. COD. Yeah, they're playing game winning COD. And they, I feel like the last few weeks, I have been really just putting their heads down and just grinding it out and really trying to just you know, fix their, their gameplay and just make yeah. sure that they're they're as good as possible going into the weekend. I thought this was a big win for them. <laughs> to, to take Seattle Surge down in a 3-0 fashion like this, knowing how big this match was, especially with Seattle being on the cusp of, of not making champs and Vegas trying to get in there. So I, Vegas I have to win, what, two now? When they get in? They win two more matches. I think they play New York, and then if they win that one, it's super yeah, they, doable. Yeah, they I think play New York's going to be a Florida. tough one. Listen, for the Seattle wow. side, last thing I'll say is, like, these guys have had way too many chances at trying to make this roster work or building a better roster. They didn't take advantage of any of these opportunities to do so. Um, if these guys don't make champs and Vegas make that run, you got nobody to blame but yourselves. And yeah, the manager and and I and listen, wait, I know that a lot of these wait, 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 wait. they got more to blame than that. They I gotta know. blame you guys and everyone on Twitter who backed up this roster and made them think and get confidence that they don't need a change. Listen, this team's needed a change. These guys talked to <laughs> these guys, period. These guys have all been really good friends. They've talked about this whole brother brotherhood aspect and believing in each other. But listen, at at one point I hope they don't make at it. one point this belief is a delusion. Yeah, that's true. They had a the problem with Seattle is just a roller coaster, right? They were up and then they were yeah. down and then they were up and, it, and it's like you know. The, every sometimes time, roller coasters get stuck. They, they get stuck. They got to call eventually. The eventually, yeah. the ride broke down and the yeah. main the maintenance guy Gwyn, his number was up on the on the boards yeah. the entire time. They never called him. Yeah, I mean that's just why it's always tricky with those teams, you know, because the, you see the potential, you see the ceiling, but they're just never getting there consistently. You know, they can't keep it. They can't keep it going. You know, they can't keep moving up. They just it's up and down all the time. Um, so Seattle Surge, obviously, they get eliminated. They're going to be watching. I'm sure they're 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 shaking up a little. I'm sure they're nervous a little bit. They're going to have they to watch pray Vegas. On Vegas you exactly. want to what it is though? Listen, the roller coaster. It was it was riding just fine. You know, prior to Pred getting that off optic offer, where you know they were trying to get him. Yeah. Up to up until that point, it was going. Yeah. It was, it was going, and then after that, guess what? That's when it started to break down. Yeah. It started to break down that roller coaster. It it stopped it stopped working, stuff bro. Like it, got, matters, it went man. down. Stuff like that matters when you're when you hear your teammate trying to go somewhere else or vice versa. I mean, granted, it is an optic offer. Everybody's going to entertain an optic offer. Like you, you got to be professional. Um, but you're right, right? Like it, it, once your team is on the cusp of breaking up, it, it could affect you in the long once run. Once that doubt, once that I mean, I'm not going to say that like anyone completely chalked or anything like that. But once that like doubt is in your head, where it's like, oh wow, my teammate wanted to leave, and we're struggling and struggling like that. That almost like feeling just it gets it gets amplified. It's like I know for a fact Pred is uh, is out there just thinking like, wow, this fucking sucks. Like, damn, I could have been here. I could have been doing this. Like, oh, I could like next year. Oh, at least next year I'll have you know a better opportunity because I'm sure he he probably understands that he will. Mm -hmm. And then from the other side, his teammates are like, damn, man, like we have all this pressure because like we know our teammates gonna leave. Now we gotta perform to either try to keep them or at least be like, yo, like we're gonna have to replace this guy eventually. Like, listen. You can say that it might not affect you all you want, but to a degree, that shit's still in your head, bro. Yeah. That shit is still in your head, no matter what. Well, let's hop into the final series of the day before we get into tomorrow's matches. Uh, we don't need to spend too much time in this one. This is the LA Thieves going up against the London Royal Ravens. Honestly, the first map, I thought London was going to be able to do it for a second. Asim started kicking up. Scraps was going crazy. Um, honestly, the whole team from London started kicking up in that first map. They almost made the comeback. Uh, I forgot the score. We can scroll down here. It was 250 to 232 in the first map. And you can see the second map was went down to around 11, too. So I felt like London actually came out and was pretty respectable this tournament, to be finally, honest. Finally. Finally, but it's just too late. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late for these guys. I mean, they obviously, their season has come to an end. They're not going to champs. Um, but I think it was a pretty respectable finish uh, after just a long season of, of L's for the it London is, it Royal It is pretty Ravens. crazy, though. Like, the three teams who aren't in champs yet won their series. Yeah. Two are technically eliminated, and yeah. one's still in the running at ninth. But, yeah, I mean, they were they have they have some fight in them. And I think this may be a case for, you know, do we want 12, all 12 teams at champs instead of eight? 
Well, yeah, I think that was an argument we were talking about a little bit yeah. yesterday. You know, is uh, should really we good. have all twelve teams there? And I or think do, like, most people, in. yeah, or playing. I think you know, I think Vico was even talking about it, but just he he was like, you know, like league matches can just help you with seeding for majors, right? Like that's what they do, and then at the end of the year, you know, send everybody. I think there needs chance. to be just a change of the format in general, but I do think all twelve. I think there's not enough fucking teams to cut people out of the world championship. I know since we're in a league, people call it playoffs, but it's champs, right? I don't think yeah. there's enough teams to cut people out. Mm -hmm. And also, it just makes it so everyone has to try to the final event. Because, yeah, listen, prize pools for majors are huge. But the prize pool for fucking champs, in comparison, is massive. Yeah. So the closer and closer to champs you get, if teams are not, like, good, they have less incentive to actually want to be good and want to make changes and improve their rosters. Some cases, like the Seattle roster and even like the London roster, it's like they just kept the same people. If if champs is still on the table for these guys, they probably would have been like, "All right, listen, we can make we can actually make these changes because we have this giant pool to play for still, mm -hmm. this giant tournament." I would mind yeah. a plan that gets two of those. A plan would be four cool. teams. Yeah, it's almost like kind of like the Miami Heat, right? In the playoffs, like look how far they've gone. Yeah, just getting in like or that. They blow it versus Celtics, but yeah, uh, we'll see. I thought this series was actually really interesting. It was a three zero, but like. London had a chance to win the first they two had, maps. Bro. They had a crazy comeback in the first map, um, and they just fell short. They got broke on the P2 on the third rotation. Mm -hmm. And the S&D went to round 11, and they had to, like, to your point, Chris, like, these was doing a lot of the phase, sort of bottom, get mid-control with CeeLo on defense, and, like, London had no answer to the aggression. And they got kind of lit on back-to-back -back offenses. London just kind of went two dead insta off the break of the round, and... Uh, and they kind of broke down on the control, but I thought I was. Listen, I got a tip from London. Like, you know, we've been really critical of this team. They play like the slowest team of all time. They came today with probably the best gameplay they've had all season. Obviously, they got top eight, and it kind of sucks, but they gave it a good try today. They ran into a hot thieves team. Yeah, got a tip. It. What happens with London going forward? Not really sure. Yeah, that was we've, my next question. Where do you think they go? You so, know what happens to these guys? So London, what they historically do is they they sign up to one, sign up to one plus one. Send them to China, Then to China. Uh, they they sign one plus one. So I expect them not to pick up the option on any of the players on this team, and then kind of see what happens. London, the last two years, has kind of been one of the last teams to build a squad. So they may just kind of take their time and kind of build the team they want. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of ex London players that have played really good in challengers, but like I don't know, you know. I think Chris kind of nailed it in a past conversation about this London team. The whole EU circle the wagons kind of BS that they may try there. I don't think it's the wise strategy. They should really pay attention to challengers, champs, see who's playing well at the end of the season, what teams are playing well at the end of the season. It may be in their best interest to start over with a new challenger squad and slowly make yeah. challenge changes throughout the, the European, season. The European teams and challengers are actually really good. I think uh, Team Notorious, um, yeah. which is the team that Eric Boom is on, because I know you guys probably heard of him from that yeah. whole Heretics thing that's happening or supposed to happen. Yeah. Um, those guys won the last challenger major. They they literally beat Rocker Academy, which Fame was on. We know Fame as a submachine gun. He's been fucking playing lights out lately. So obviously, these guys are no joke. Um, in general, there's going to be, you know, these champs teams from Europe that go to the to champs and even look at this major, um, see how well these European teams do at the end of the, you know, at the end of the year and just pick an entire Europe because you want to stay on brand. I know Lon London loves their European players. I think this is the most, uh, NA players they've had on the roster at one time now. But if you're, if you're just consistent with wanting to be, have a European brand, a UK brand, pick up the best UK talent, UK team out of all of them, and then, again, let them sort each other out. Um, some of the names that will probably appear on those rosters are people like Harry, Wee Man, um, Siggy, Maple. Harry, Harry, um, would it wait, surprise but you, you guys keep talking about the European players. Aren't aren't there owners, the uh, KOI, the Spanish well, group? Yeah, but they can't have another Spanish team. Well, they, well we mean, don't we don't know that might. yet. We don't, we don't know, know what's going to happen. Regardless, if they want to yeah. stay on brand wait, with the with London, like, and obviously pick up a UK team, mm -hmm. that's probably their best bet. How do you say, how do you say um, yes in Spanish? C. C. See these nuts in your mouth live on the flank. I got them all. Uh, <laughs> so Let's hop in into to tomorrow's matches, uh, bro. We got the New York Subliners going up against Vegas. That's obviously a loser's bracket match. Vegas looking to get into champs. So that is going to be a massive match for them. And then, of course, we got the Minnesota Rocker going up against the Florida Mutineers. Florida's been looking really good. 
Minnesota's been looking a lot better now ever since Attach came back into the roster, so that's going to be a good one. We got Toronto Ultra, the home crowd, the home team going up against Atlanta Phase. I think that's going to be a big one. I think, Chris, you mentioned you think whoever wins that match is going to go on to win the whole thing. Yeah. And then, of course, the rest of those matches will be determined based on what happens uh, from these first Wait, three re matches. Wait, real quick, I have an idea, and this is uh, outside of this. You know we were talking about the whole format? Yeah. What if... Because this wouldn't affect the regular season at all. People would still get their majors. They would get their screen time. I don't think the franchises would mind this. Because prior to this, the format was those four teams don't even make it. Uh -huh. What if the bottom four that don't make champs play in a play-in tournament against the top four challenger tournaments? In that have, they, uh, cha uh, Top four challenger teams, they have to qualify through some sort of way. But what if those four teams play against each other for the spots at champs? They still so the 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 franchises I mean, would it, still be in right. the league. The they problem, would still be in the majors and stuff like that. But before they didn't make champs in the first place, at least now they have a a way to kind of prove it to get in. Franchises and league will matches, never let that happen. Well, hold though, on, but Chris. league matches still mean something because it means you don't get relegated at least for the final event of the, the year. The problem, not all the, the events. problem, Chris, is then you're still having a twelve team bracket and like, are we gonna just have people start and lose round one of champs? Like, we're just down for that. Is like that, you win the play-in tournament and then you have a... Is that, and, a 12, and, is that the only way a 12-team bracket franchise would work? Franchises spent way too much money. I mean, you, never uh, the only that. problem is... They're like, never going to allow that you, risk of They not wouldn't even... There. They're not. The thing is, though, they're not going to be at the tournament regardless. It's not even... It's not even... It's like, if, if right now the current format stays, the bottom four teams aren't going to be there anyways. At least now there's a way for them to not only get in, but also gives other people opportunities. So not only do you still have another lifeline... So there's it's it's not it's not the it's not as easy as now it's like oh league matches don't matter because everyone's going anyways it's like league matches still matter because you avoid the relegation so it's like it's like a, I think I it's a happy medium it's a happy saying. medium of like league matches still matter but it also presents opportunity do you agree? You see that happening? I mean, I don't see. If that. there's a way that, if there's realistic. a way for that, Brian, I don't see it working. I don't see it happening either. I'm just putting you know, putting some out maybe, there. Maybe I think challenger teams are getting slammed anyway in that situation, but I mean. Maybe. Well, let's go through uh, the matches. Yeah. We'll give our predictions. End of the season, I don't know. Uh, beginning, of the season, beginning of the season, maybe. I, hey, season, I, I think it would just be interesting. It would be interesting. I just think you have the 12. The problem is at that point, there's a little bit of like a bracket integrity thing because 12 teams, you have already started winners, but then you have a team lose to the same team twice and be out, and that's kind of whack. And you could have people win that play-in tournament that end up in losing round one, which is no, also what, No, no, no. What if, what if uh, the top four teams got a bye? And that, then... But, that's what I'm saying, but then you have the same like no no loser lose, bracket start. It you like still the lose the same team twice. Problem with the flip. Mm. There's like a there, I, I would have to draw it out for you. It's that is that's I why they don't it, do it now. It's like ah, I'm yeah. trying I'm trying, dude. I'm trying I'm trying to like you know. Well, let's get into the matches tomorrow. I'll start things off. We got New York versus Vegas. I'm gonna go with Vegas. I think they're making a run. Just the energy they came out with today, the way they played. I just feel like they got a chip on their shoulder and they want to do this thing. They want to make this happen. I'm gonna go three one. Vegas Legion over the New York Subliners. Pat, who do you got? I got a banger. Game five, round 11. Vegas clutch up. Ooh. It's going to be a Clayster versus Priesta or Hydra moment. That'd Game be five, fun. round That'd 11. Be crazy. That would be insane. Father versus son. Ben Clay's J, who do you win. got? These teams have played each other a couple of times. Recently, New York slammed them, and then they played a couple of weeks ago, and Vegas grinded out, and I feel like New York kind of like tossed a couple rounds in that search. I would love for Vegas to make this run. Uh, I just think New York's going to take in a Game 5 heartbreaker. I really want Vegas to win. I love the boys in New York, but I just, I don't know, man. I think New York might get it done. All right, Chris, what do you got? Um, as much as uh, I want to see Vegas make the run, I think New York have actually looked really good. I think they choked the fucking life out of themselves in that, in that uh, Toronto Ultra Series. And I think Vegas' run ends here. But... I would love for Vegas to make make the run, man. It'd be it'd be really a spectacle. Yeah. All right. Then we got the Minnesota Rocker going up against the Florida Mutineers. I mean, personally, I'm just gonna go with Florida. I think both teams have been kicking up, but just the the way Florida has been playing and the way they've been beating teams, they actually playing with just a. Uh, like a confidence around them right now, especially like the sub players like Vickle. Uh, honestly, all of them, but especially Vickle. Like some of these guys, I just feel like they're they're catching rhythm, not just individually, but as a team. And they've been talking about it a lot. Even having Vickle here on on the watch party, he was talking about it, just really focusing on their fundamentals and teamwork. And I just feel like if they stay uh, stick to their game plan, I think Florida is going to continue to do what they do. So I'm going to go with the Florida Mutineers. I'm going to go three two over to Minnesota Rockers. Slay, who do you got? For me, it's all about what Florida we get here. Um, if we get the online Florida that we've seen, 
I don't I don't think it's gonna be close. But if we get the Florida that showed up day one, yeah, I think they could easily beat this this rocker team. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with you, Tom. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the underdog train going for the Florida Mutineers. Oh, Ben, who you got, bro? Um, I think that Florida is gonna come out tomorrow and make it to winners finals. I think we're gonna take Florida three one over Rocker. That'd be crazy. Chris, who you got? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. We got the this is word to somebody that tweeted me. We got the we got a different script, but the same finale. It's gonna come down to Vegas and Rocker playing for their spot at champs, That'd where Vegas crazy. is playing for that, right? So naturally, I think we got the Muneers, um beating Rocker. Mm. Everyone says Muneers has looked incredible in scrims. They've came out here and they've looked nothing short of that. Mm. Um, if they can keep this up, man, these guys. These guys are making the run, dude. It's a shame. I think they're they were like one match off. Imagine they win the tournament for whatever reason, right? Because these guys obviously look pretty good. They still don't qualify. Yeah, it's crazy. They're like one match off of like potentially making. I mean, they would have made their one sixty five. They would have been a, a little bit, but yeah, like yeah. They 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 just again they just turned it on late, but it would be very. It would present Florida going to next season with some very interesting decisions for mm-hmm. sure. Somebody said the chat attached getting his slice of the pie. That I think that's fucking hilarious. He's already qualified, right? So <clears throat> yeah, they're already they're already qualified. And then we got Atlanta Phase going up against Toronto Ultra. I think Phase have been looking really good. Um, but been, been watching their scrims a little bit, even the the way they came out and took care of Vegas. Um, I think Toronto's obviously going to be a different ball game uh, than Vegas. I think yeah. Toronto's they're, they're going to have the crowd behind them and everything. But I think Atlanta Phase is gonna is gonna quiet this crowd down tomorrow. Get the job done. I'm going three two. Atlanta phase. Slay it. Who do you got? It's gonna be a good match. It's gonna be a good one, Slay. These but, are your world champs, Toronto. Yeah, listen, Tom. I have them winning champs still. Mm-hmm. But I have phase winning this event. Oh. And so for the phase thieves matchup that I'm predicting, I have to have phase getting there to the winner bracket. So Toronto, I'm sorry. You're going home into yeah. the loser bracket tomorrow. Ben. They seem to have played a lot this season, uh, and weirdly, FaZe has kind of had, even when FaZe was kind of poor respawn, had the hand in there. Toronto beat them a couple of times in search. I think, what, they, they played like once on Fortress, a couple of times on a Stilo. I just think where FaZe is at with the respawn right now, especially the hard point, and how much do I think of a better S&D squad there than Toronto, I just think FaZe will probably take this one like 3-1, but Game 5 could be kind of interesting with the home Home crowd, but FaZe North historically had a pretty good record against Toronto on land. I think they keep that going today, uh, tomorrow. Chris, who do you got? Um, just one thing I want to clarify for the chat. What I meant by the Rocker and Vegas playing each other for a spot champs, It's a, that's why I said different script, the same finale, because they're still playing each other, but one team is trying to make it the champs, but it's the same matchup, just yeah. for chat. But also, um, FaZe um, has won this matchup, I think, pretty much every single time they've played at a, at a major tournament. Um, FaZe's kryptonite at tournaments has been running into optics, so um, I, I still think FaZe is going to beat the Ultra, but who knows how Ultra is going to come out here with their home crowd, but I got the Atlanta FaZe. All right, well, guys, we got a lot of amazing matches. We actually, uh, you know, we had a really long day here in the watch party. Got the show done. Looks like the venue is uh, pretty much cleared out. I think they're just uh, they waiting. They're waiting for us. Who, yeah, who, I mean, who is shooting over there? You heard they're that? blowing yeah, they're up the fucking thunder the, sticks. The they're thunder like sticks. I don't know why they got to fucking do them all at uh, one they take time. A, because they take too much space in the trash. That's why they pop them. Oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, but, uh, yeah, those things were popping off all day. But, uh, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's watch party. I hope you guys today uh, enjoyed today's episode of The Flank. Um, huge shout out to, to Slayer for getting here quick enough to, to hop on with us. Shout out to Chris and Ben and everybody who's been tuning in. Uh, shout out to Toronto Ultra for, for getting us such a crazy spot. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here. The event's been a, been a blast, man. A lot of exciting matches coming up. So I'm excited to get into the rest of the weekend. We'll obviously be live tomorrow, ready to go, and we'll get back to business. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites that we're on and go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gers doing a phenomenal job running socials. And then also make sure to go check out stallings.club uh, merch coming out soon. So I appreciate you guys. Take care. Brush your hair. You guys have a fantastic night, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.